major intersection just moments ago, you didn't see him take off because there was, you could see the reflection of the water down there and it met, even that rider might have realized how dangerous that was. And right there, running another red light, cutting those people off, making left turns. This is one of those situations where we watch in, you know, up here in Sky Fox and the viewers at home, we just sit there and we, you know, it, it, is, it is a nail biter. You just don't want to see, even though this person is being very defiant, you don't want to see anybody get hurt, especially somebody on a motorcycle at those high speeds. One wrong move, one vehicle that just isn't aware that that motorcycle is traveling at 100 miles an hour or plus, it creates a problem. There you go, the Sheriff's Department. And this is the thing. That motorcyclist basically just, you know, again, there you see that defiance. And, you know, just got in front of him and is now really moving out again. I believe that we're going to be on, I'm trying to get streets for you right now, but this is, th that attitude is what's going to get somebody, you know, hopefully nobody, but, you know, it, it's just, somebody's going to get hurt in this, and this is, these are one of those ones where we watch from Sky Fox, and we just, you just don't want to see a tragic ending, even though this uh, person today, really, the suspect, just, you know, really just taking so many chances just trying to get away from law enforcement. Yeah, this is incredible. Even even seeing the, the driver traveling at what is obviously a very high rate Valley. of speed here. And you see it, again, relative to the cars that are on the roadway there, on a surface street, no less, unloading as fast as he can uh, down this street and then uh, coming to a slow, slowing to, uh, as, the, as he approaches this intersection there. And as you saw completely defiant when that black and white, the sheriff's vehicle came right upon uh, his rear, he kind of motions to them. You're wondering if he was using some kind of an offensive uh, signal to him using his hands and, uh, and, and, and being completely defiant here. So we're still, uh, it appears in the East San Gabriel Valley area as this uh, motorcycle continues to drive at a high rate of speed. You were talking about the weather too and, and some of the sprinkles that we had earlier today, there was still water on the roadways. I was driving there this morning and you, when, when you have a situation where we haven't had uh, any weather for, the, for a very long period of time and you have some moisture on the roadways with the dust that's on the roadways, the oils, they can be Oiled. a lot more s uh, slick at this point. So it's really extremely dangerous for this driver to be a uh, motorcyclist to be driving at this high rate of speed. But then there, there you see uh, completely ignoring um, the, the, the helicopter that's overhead and completely ignoring the black and whites that continue to follow this motorcycle through the San Gabriel Valley area and traveling at a very high rate of speed. Uh, trying to get an, an idea of where we're looking at right here. That, Stu? That was, well, we were, we were on Sunset, and I believe he just made a turn on Francisqui, Francisquito. Uh, and uh, basically, th this is an area where it's a, a, a southeast type of direction, uh, that road right there. Sky Fox making our way over towards that uh, area right there. We're in a backup ship today that I can tell you, Adam working, uh, working these, the, the one radio we have uh, feverishly so we can keep communications and stay safe up here in Sky Fox. Just made a turn into a residential neighborhood. That's going to be a little bit harder for us to get an actual uh, street name for, but maybe California Street, I believe, is what uh, what, what we're hearing right now. But uh, but it, this is going to be one of those ones if he gets into, maybe he's in the area where he's near his home. Uh, maybe he can, uh, you know, people will try to abandon that motor and make a run for it. Here we go again, another, another smaller street out here. Uh, but, uh, you know, one of the things that we watch uh, from Sky Fox uh, is in, in these situations where they drive so fast out here, the, you know, law enforcement, they, they're going to play the safety card. They're going to back off. They've got the helicopter up above. Uh, and, but the deal is, is, you know, folks that are just making that turn, going, you know, making their way onto the street, if they see that motorcycle off in the distance, they think they're clear. Nobody's really, you know, you're not thinking that that bike is going to be moving at 80, maybe 90 miles an hour on a, on a street. And a, clearly he's in an area where he knows where he is. He was just gesturing some people that were waiting out on the lawn there. Uh, so uh, now we're going to keep an eye on where he goes if he stays in this neighborhood. But definitely there was some gesturing right there to some folks that were actually on the lawn, appeared to be waiting for him. But the, the deal is, 
Drivers on the road, you're going to be making a right turn or a left turn. They look, they see that motorcycle off in the distance, not realizing this bike moving almost at 100 miles an hour. And they think they're clear. They think they have enough room. And they make that turn in front of that motorcycle. And that's when those collisions happen. Uh, the bike right now making another U-turn right there, maybe heading back over to that area or perhaps staying. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Looks like he's unloading some... Uh, yeah, it looks like he's unloading something right there. I don't know why he would do that. It look, yeah, it looks like he threw off a, threw a duffel or a backpack out there. But that was kind of interesting. So, Bobby, this brings us back to the original. Maybe there's a reason why this motorcycle doesn't have any plates on it. And maybe this rider not just wanted for speed. Ooh, look at that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, You've and, got and so. You've got a so really yeah, close side there, Stu. Uh, we want to yeah. tell our viewers, again, we're watching a high-speed pursuit. A motorcyclist wanted for uh, high speed for driving at an unsafe speed and no tags did not stop in the East San Gabriel Valley area. We're looking at the West Covina area. And you're watching the Fox 11 News at noon as we bring you this breaking news. Uh, and, Stu, I, I, again, I didn't see that, uh, that particular spot where you said that he motioned towards some people in a neighborhood and looks like the, the, this motorcyclist continues to stay in this general vicinity in the West Covina area, even going in and around not just surface streets, but really into the neighborhoods as well. And then you also uh, said that it also appeared like he maybe got rid of something or dropped something, yeah. opened his jacket, it almost looked like. It, it, he definitely threw a duffel out of that, uh, off the motorcycle into somebody's driveway back there. Don't know if it was uh, somebody that he knows or anything like that. I'm sure it's on tape. If one of our uh, one of our techs might be able to go back and see that real quick, it was pretty clear that it was a large black duffel that he actually threw out there. Don't know if he pulled it out of his jacket or maybe it was just attached to the bike somewhere. Uh, but also, there was definitely two people out on the lawn there when he made that turn. They were, you know, basically cheering this guy on as he made that turn. So right now, the pursuit continues. Looks like he's picking another residential area, perhaps to uh, make that make make his way uh, into an you know into a home or maybe uh, at least a neighborhood where he knows where he's at. Um, but again, it, it, this is just one of those ones where we watch it. And we're, ha we're, we're thankful that uh, nobody's getting hurt. But this, this motorcycle continues to take these chances and these risks. You know, it, it, it's just like anything else. It's not a, it's not a when you're going to, it's not a if you're going to fall. It's a when you're going to fall. And you saw him right there. Just lose it a little bit. Also, something, Bobby, that you've got to think about is this rider it must be starting to get exhausted. You know, clearly, he's just riding that motorcycle, but clearly there must be adrenaline going on there riding a bike like that it does involve some physical strength you know maybe he's starting to get a little bit exhausted and and hopefully his decision making process will come to the point where he's like I'm gonna pull over I'm gonna you know I'm gonna bring this to an end before he makes a mistake that's gonna injure himself or somebody it, else it's just my guess just based on the where this motorcycle is going it almost seems that he is going in a neighborhood that he knows because it almost seems like just just based on the circling, uh, he's circling streets in and yeah. around this one neighborhood. Doesn't seem to be as we you know we see these pursuits and this and this driver can go travel at a very high dis, high that rate of speed in any direction and go anywhere. And basically the, the freeways are very close. You've got the 10 freeway, the 605 not that far away. Certainly could, he could go onto, this, onto some of the freeways, but this driver seems to be circling this West Covina area, particularly that neighborhood. And then we saw also some of these shopping centers in and around that neighborhood as well. Uh, just kind of uh, almost uh, yahooing it, if you will, going, slowing, stopping, and then and then speeding up at a really high rate of speed. And there you see doing a, a, a U-turn -turn. right in the middle of an intersection. So it almost it almost appears that this this driver is in a in a neighborhood or at least in an area that he's familiar with onto a sidewalk now. Yeah, you know, and, and we're, just so the, the public kind of knows the general area, we're off of, Sam, of Francisquito uh, Avenue and near Sunset, near Glendora, they, just in, in Merced, it's basically in that giant block area right there in the uh, West Covina area, and it almost appears that we've been going by that same uh, shopping center. I haven't seen the, the Big Five is what I've been using as my reference point, but I haven't seen it rolling through there again. They, you clearly saw it. We just crossed over Sunset. So 
So they don't know if he's making his way out towards Orange because he was on Orange earlier on, but really picking up some speed again right there. Shirt and his uh, hoodie basically blowing up the back, blowing, <laughs> blowing up the back of his back. But uh, at any rate, every time he opens it up like that, every time he really starts to move that motorcycle along, you just got, you just hope that those tires stay the state of the ground and you also hope that no other vehicle isn't you know isn't expecting him to be going 100 miles an hour going to change lanes or do anything that's unexpected in front of that motorcycle that rider might be getting tired. We've been seeing a little bit slower movement with the bike, even though on the straightaways, he's still really opening it up. But uh, all those hard turns, all that uh, you know, going through areas, and it, the, it, it, it could get exhausting for that rider. So that's something else to uh, consider. And as he, gets, you know, as he gets more exhausted, he might be prone to make some more mistakes or unable to, to control that motorcycle the, the best that he could. So right now, we're keeping an eye on it. I can tell you the Sheriff's Department has not let this go, but it is because of safety. They're not on the ground, and they also feel that it's almost, uh, you know, that the rider is taunting the, uh, the deputies, and it also might be a problem. You know, they might, they're thinking that maybe if he doesn't see those deputies down there, he's going to be able to, uh, you know, maybe slow down or make some better decisions. Looks like right now he's making a decision to get some fuel. Well, now which he seems is, to be talking uh, to it, some of the people fueling up at this, at this gas station. Yeah, and, um, and you almost wonder if he's going to try to... Yeah, he just wow. jacked that guy's uh, wow. the <laughs> fuel right there. You know, and at a couple of dollars a gallon, that's, you know, that, that, that that's almost petty theft. This At any rate, he just, took, he just took a squirt or two, <laughs> and, that, and that's about it. But, uh, you know, so it does show you he might be running on empty. Uh, you know, a couple, just, a, just a gallon on that bike will get you a good distance, I, but I, uh, he's continuing I, on there. Wow. It's, so, it's, it's interesting, because I had that question, um, and I... And I'm not sure. I'm not a motorcyclist, so I don't know how long a motorcycle can run on a, on a tank of gas, especially if you're unloading at uh, very high rates of speed here. You're going to have to, you know, we often talk about during, during chases how long, you know, you only can run on the one tank of gas, right? You have to gas up. But again, yep. it, it, goes to, it goes to the fact that these motorcyclists, you can be so nimble uh, and... Yep. and <laughs> It's interesting how that woman, of course, she did the right thing. He probably said, hey, get, let, me, let me have some gas here. She goes back in her vehicle. He grabs the, the pump for just a second and gives himself a couple of gallons, and he's back on the yep. run again. Yep, and, and he has a pop. There he is. He's, he just came out the other side. But, he, but yeah, it, it, it's one of those ones. And now he's starting, you know, to gesture. It seems like he's almost gesturing to anybody that's going to look at him. I find it hard to believe that, you know, just a lot of these random folks down there actually are, you know, are watching or or know that this is a chase. Also, Bobby, you know, that was one of the things that I noticed besides the fact that he, he – he just uh, he just basically uh, you know stole gas from those people right there. Is that all of a sudden there was a lot of uh, black and whites in the area? You saw that CHP cruiser nearby all of a sudden, and then you also saw that another sheriff's uh, deputy driving up the road. So they are in the area, and this is one of the things you talked about. And I was so hopeful that you were right about this one. It looks like we're getting on the 10th uh. freeway, uh, so maybe we're going to go back to where this uh, kind of started. Uh, the only plus on this is that. That, you know there aren't a lot of turns there aren't any intersections but definitely he's you know we've seen this uh, this rider really driving very very quickly and again this falls back into the same thing you're driving along you're gonna make a lane change you check your mirrors you might see this motorcycle far off in the distance you nobody's thinking that you know that bike is gonna be right there because he's going 100 miles an hour and you're gonna do that lane change safely and then the next thing you know you you make contact with a motorcyclist uh, that's one of the big risks out there uh, you know I'm the guy that always you know when there's traffic I'll move over if I hear them coming or I see him in the rearview mirror but you know, when you're going 100 miles an hour and traffic's going 70, it, it becomes very, very dangerous for these uh, riders. And, you know, these are the decisions that they're making. And, and in the end, you know, it, it could ruin, you know, a driver, some, somebody in a car's day, and it might really ruin that rider's day. Um, I'll be the first to admit when I'm wrong. And, yep, I, 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 I still do believe that he, he, he knows that West Covina area 
you know, he, he's Definitely. familiar with that area, but then decided to get here on the freeway and then just, again, unload there. By the way, that 76 yep. gas station in yep. West Covina was on Puente and Francisquito. And so yep. right there in the middle of the West Covina area and now North uh, 605. merging onto the 605, you said, Stu? I'm sorry, no, I, we were just talking about what freeway he was on inside the helicopter. Sorry about that, Bobby. Yep. Uh, you know, it's, we're north on the 605 Got freeway it. from the, uh, from the uh, westbound 10. That's basically where we just transitioned. Now we're north on the 605. He could make his way back into that same neighborhood. You know, basically just take, that, uh, take the 605 up to the 210 and then drop back south again. Maybe he's just, you know, burning off that fuel, that little bit of extra fuel he got there. For the most part, you have to think that that rider must know that the uh, sheriff's helicopter is above and they're going to keep an eye on him uh, if he's trying to p formulate a plan well you know th th you can try all you want the reality is is you know if that motorcycle belongs to him and it probably does you know just to, just out of you know general thought is probably does belong to him you know the reality is is that bike is going to get impounded and he probably is going to have a lot of explaining to do how to get it back and or lose it in this uh, as an outcome but right now luckily there hasn't been any Luckily, now, and this is the thing too, a, a quick move like that, a driver that's unaware might not hit that motorcycle, but might lock up the brakes, create another problem. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a lot going on out here. And, but the, the most dangerous thing is that rider on that motorcycle, extremely high speeds, running from law enforcement. And you got to be clear about this. There's nobody behind him. So if anybody's watching and saying, well, you know, that's one of the reasons why the law enforcement doesn't stay behind so many times is because they feel that that rider or the person they're pursuing will look in the rearview mirror and now he doesn't have that tension or her, that tension of, you know, I've got to run. You know, and that's and, and we've seen it work many times in the past. But that helicopter definitely above it, definitely keeping an eye on it, and also informing officers and deputies on the ground where this rider is, where he's going, and where he might stop. And uh, like I said, we, we saw that at the gas station. All of a sudden, that vehicle stopped, get some get got some fuel, and uh, there was a bunch of black and whites right there. So they were making their way in to uh, to kind of lock down that area. Sadly, that uh, rider got the fuel and took off. Uh, right now, we're going to be northbound. 605 freeway coming up near the Santa Fe Dam area. The 210 is his options. If not, he's basically going to dump himself out on the Huntington Drive up the Duarte area. But uh, right now, basically still driving much faster than freeway speeds. And uh, like, like we've been saying, helicopters are above. Okay, northbound on, on the 605. The reality is, Stu, you've been doing this much, much longer than I have. You've, you've watched these, these uh, pursuits over and over again. And you've seen, uh, I think people out know already that there are uh, helicopters overhead watching. We have we have a split box here because we want to show you were telling us earlier that as he was going through the West Covina area, he seemed to be waving at people on the side of the street. We're going to take a closer look at this right here as he goes through that neighborhood. And we were talking about how it's it seemed almost as if this uh, motorcyclist was familiar with the West Covina area just circling those streets for a very long period of time. So we're watching just on the right side of your screen. This is uh, that time when uh, just a few, uh, just a short while ago, going through a neighborhood and was waving at people uh, in some sort of a neighborhood. And we're back here on this live shot here on, uh, as you said, the 605 freeway. So we should be approaching the 210 freeway, Stu? Definitely getting very close to the 210 freeway. I'm keeping an eye on that little white car right there. At first, I thought it was a Subaru, but it might be uh, it might be something else. But definitely was uh, at least you know is keeping up pace or best he can uh, with that uh, with that motorcyclist. Now he's kind of got got blocked in. So it looks like uh, because he's leaning over towards the the right lanes right there. We're definitely going to be taking. We have to take the 210. But uh, I, I'm guessing we're going to be doing an eastbound. But uh, that's just a, a shot shot in the dark right there. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on it. He could definitely, he's crossing back down. Look at that, right across the gore point. Uh, that's some dangerous moves for a motorcycle. So it looks like, and, and now definitely, we're committed to the westbound. So now we're going to be doing westbound 210. So we're basically getting out of that area that we thought that mm. he was so familiar with, or maybe he is, and he's just leaving it. We just don't know. But at any rate, on that transition, you can see uh, looks like a, a deputy's vehicle right there, not California Highway Patrol. But, you know, it, it, is it just coincidence? Coincidence? 
Yeah, there's two of them. So is it coincidence? It might be. We'll see here just a moment as that motorcycle uh, get basically gets into the lanes out here, makes that establishes that transition. And now we are westbound 210 freeway in the Duarte area. And uh, you, you can see it right there, really starting to pick up some speed again. But we know he's low on fuel, and I don't know how much fuel he could have possibly got there. Maybe a gallon. Uh, usually when, those pump, when I grab those pumps, they go really, really slow, never fast enough. So, you know, but any fuel is enough to get him, keep him moving, and that's what he's doing right now. And uh, waking our way to Mountain, it'll be the first or next off-ramp right there. And continue, yep, looks like we're getting off at Mountain. So uh, keep, an, uh, keep an eye on where he's going. My point that I was making earlier, Stu, again, you've been doing this for a long time, and I think by now, uh, don't you think these drivers know that there are helicopters overhead that they, oh. are being, that they are being watched? I mean, sometimes they even just motion to the helicopters overhead, telling them to, to, to try and tell them to, to back off. And, and it would just be impossible for officers on the roads to follow this motorcyclist safely, uh, you know, chasing, chasing it through streets and surface streets and neighborhoods and, and the like. Definitely, and, and they, of course they know that they're being followed. Of course they know that there's somebody watching them, and, and, ba and it isn't just coincidence. I'm kind of wondering right now, I'm kind of stumbling around right here, if he's, he's looking at the garage because we're back into another shopping center area. Uh, it, it, this, it seems to be one of the spots where he likes to go to or drive through. I'm not really sure what that is all about. Uh, back on, I believe we're back on the central right now. This is paralleling the 210 freeway. The, the traffic out here, you know, when he was making that one little turn there, uh, it, you know, cutting those people off, making the, like the wide uh, right-hand turns, and it, those are extremely dangerous. You know, he, he can't see what's going on on the other side. And uh, right now it looks like, because, again, we don't have that map today, uh, it looks like we're going to be northbound on it's either shamrock or mountain but a lot more traffic and you know bobby you're so right the law enforcement they they could maybe keep up in the in the idea that they could stay that's huntington 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 histor the historic route 66 making our way back the other direction but they chose to follow in the helicopter that's probably the best bet keeping the uh, deputies and law enforcement safe and then, whoop, there you go wow uh, and and you, you got to wonder uh, you know that deputy has got to know that this was coming and they're also probably not to engage maybe just that momentary flash of the siren right there their presence maybe he was just hoping that it was enough to get him to stop there's, there's another, another law enforcement right there and yeah. so that just shows you that they know that it, this is happening in the area. They know that if he dumps the bike and he bails, that they'll be in that area very quickly, locking down that perimeter and trying to get that guy into custody. Well, you know, what choices does this motorcyclist have, right? And then there, there's more black and whites there in the area. By the way, we do have that video, Stu, of the situation in West Covina happened earlier, where the driver, as we said, we don't know how much gas this motorcycle has, but... He did make the effort to uh, go get some gas so we could only glean that this uh, motorcyclist is running out of gas. And you're looking there at the right hand, right hand side of your screen. Another picture here as uh, Sky Back Fox zooms street. in and you can see there are, there's a woman there who is gassing up her vehicle, another person there, and they're just walking away and letting him grab the pump and yep. uh, put in a, a couple of uh, gallons of gas in his motorcycle before uh, then taking off and then uh, it looks as if on the left hand side of your screen that's the live picture and it looks as if Stu that motorcycle is back on a freeway back on the freeway I was hoping it was just a frontage road right there but back on the freeway and really opening it up again you can clearly see that that vehicle moving double the speed of what's going on down there so he's probably well into the triple digits there's no limiter on that motorcycle as, as fast as that motor will push that uh, transmission is as fast as that bike is going to go uh, it, it just it Still, even though it's wide open, Bobby, I'm just telling you, I, you know, you can hear a little bit of jovial in my voice, but believe me, the jovial is just that I cannot grasp 
the, you know, the, the risk that this guy is taking. That, mm -hmm. that is really what it is. It isn't like uh, anything other than that. I just worry that, the, the, you know, that we're going to see something on the freeway that we just don't yeah. want to see live on television. And, uh, and the motorcycle actually moving a little quicker than even Sky Fox can today. Uh, and we're just continuing on out here. And we're definitely uh, moving along at a really good clip. I wish we had the map, to, uh, the, 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 the speedometer today, just to, to, to you know, really record these speeds. Uh, definitely moving uh, westbound on the 210 freeway. We're making our way through the Monrovia area right now. Arcadia will be the next stop if he doesn't get back off the freeway. But, Bobby, you, you know, we watch him get fuel, and the only reason somebody in a chase would actually stop and try to throw some gas in their, in their motorcycle is because they were running out. And uh, so you just got to wonder how much longer that this bike is just going to be able to ride. Uh, if, if we knew that he just had, you know, that extra gallon of fuel, how, much, how, how long is that going to, how much time is that going to get him? Uh, if anybody knows, you know, text me. I'd love to, yeah. I'd love to hear some actual numbers. Uh, we're coming up on Santa Ana is the next boulevard, so we're already in Arcadia. Speed's probably well into the triple digits yeah. right there. We've been in and out of traffic. Wet roads, not rain, but definitely damp. Slick. Looks like he's moving way over to the right. We might be getting off the freeway again, Bob. Well, well you're talking about speeds and to the triple digits and we're hearing upwards of 120 miles per hour so this is a very yep. very high rate of speed and you can you can tell by the again the relative speed of the motorcycle versus other cars on the roadway right now that uh, he's traveling at a very high rate of speed and then you have to also wonder with the gas situation there although he did gas up and get a couple more gallons yep. if he is low on fuel to be unloading it at such a very high rate of speed you expend gas a lot more quickly whether or not he's going to have to pull another stunt and do the same thing again and try to get some gas from someone else at another gas station. But um, you're like our human okay. GPS, Stu. You, you've yeah. been following this person pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's, your, it's your years of experience knowing these uh, freeways and roads in Southern California to try to figure out and navigate where exactly this person is, and especially at such a high rate of speed. So uh, just to, just to uh, reset for our viewers here who have been watching us, Ooh. this is the Fox 11 News at noon. We've been watching this uh, high-speed chase with a motorcyclist through the San, East San Gabriel Valley. It's been uh, mostly on surface streets uh, in the West Covina area. Spent a lot of time there in the West Covina area, but then we've seen this driver now dump onto the 10 freeway, the 6 5 freeway and then now onto the 210 freeway and as you see continues to unload at a very high rate of speed the initial uh, call was just that this driver was driving at an un, uh, rate, unsafe rate of speed, uh, this motorcyclist, and also that it didn't have plates, but obviously the motorcyclist did not stop. And it does appear that um, the, uh, the black and whites, the CHP or the, uh, or the Sheriff's Department, who has been the main uh, handle on this, has kind of taken uh, a, an approach to back off just a bit to, to let this driver uh, what are you doing? drive and then uh, but then uh, there is a helicopter overhead. All right, Stu, you've been listening to me uh, ramble on about this, but wow, more dangerous uh, moves by this motorcyclist. Uh, definitely. One of my friends, Andrew, uh, just texted me that you get those motorcycles get to about 35 to 45 miles per gallon. And, you know, about a gallon of gas might get you about at these speeds right around 30 more minutes of, uh, of ride time. Interesting. I, I, I genuinely believe that. Uh, you know, that those numbers probably just about right. It looked like some other motorcycles on the uh, on the 210 freeway either joining in or uh, just happened to be in the in the wrong spot at the wrong time. But uh, he, he basically went right fast them and then you know, then he started weaving a little bit and I can, you can see the reflection on the freeway so you know that roadway is damp and he's moving along at those high clips it, it is just it, I just just don't want to see that bike just get a little bit of that wobble, that you know, that little death wobble, and then just throw that rider. Uh, right now, though, continuing on, I can tell you, we're we're going to be in Pasadena here in just a moment or two. Actually, we are in Pasadena. Excuse me, excuse me. We are in Pasadena, and it's continuing on. So right now, it, you know, he's kind of running out of options. He can take that 210 and basically make his way north, uh, you know, into the La Cunada area. There's that other biker who, uh, you know, didn't want to get showed up. And it just, you, you just, 
I, now I'm worried for that guy. So I, I just got to let it all go. Just let it all well, go. It's that, it's, uh, it, that, it's that motorcyclist mentality, right? It's, it's yeah. the, the, the more, other motorcyclists probably didn't even know that this was a pursuit that was going on and just sees another <laughs> motorcycle pulling up and this does the Fast and the Furious and says, hey, yep. you know, we're still in a pandemic. Yep, that, There's still not as many cars on the roadway. Let's go, right? And then, yeah, then realizes, uh, maybe I shouldn't do this. <laughs> but well hopefully he got that you know that 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 reasoning came to that other guy pretty quickly this 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 uh, one we've been watching here moving along pretty well uh, the 210 if he does do that that a la Kenyatta thing it's going to be really tough for Sky Fox the, the weather really is coming down the clouds are coming down I'm hoping for the 134 so that at least we can uh, keep following along but it definitely looks like he's either getting off the freeway right there in the Pasadena area saying that for uh, our pilot Adam today to, to keep an eye on it definitely may got off the freeway, got off the freeway, and uh, you, there he is. So we'll keep an eye on where he's going, what's going on right there, but uh, hopefully he's going to make a turn to the south, and he is. But, uh, again, it's just one of those ones where you just you, you want this to come to an end safely, but every time he goes through one of these intersections, and the, right there's another one that the building's kind of blocking us. We have to keep a little bit more separation with the with the helicopters today because of the weather and because of the fact that visibility is so uh, is is so limited. That's one of the reasons why Sky Fox is staying a little bit farther away right now. Hopefully, we'll be get back into the fold here in just a moment or two. But uh, I'm looking out the window for you, Vinny, just to just to keep an eye on it. If I see him moving, I'll, I'll holler it out. Okay, but so right now, we're making our way back to where we last saw him and uh, keeping an eye on that intersection. That's where he should pop out, but uh, we'll keep an eye out and see where he where he went So to. this is definitely the Pasadena area, right? Definitely Stewart, Pasadena. So it was the 210 freeway. I think it's it's close to uh, maybe Lake. At Lake. Lake, so, you know, a big... Walnut like and Hudson. So, Walnut and Hudson is where he's at. So, he's basically paralleling the freeway. He's paralleling the he's paralleling the freeway, Adam. Adam? He's that way. He's... Okay. Wal Walnut and Hudson in the city of Pasadena. All right, we're going to give Sky Fox and student opportunity. He's, he's, to, he's, he's over, he's on the street that's paralleling, Vinny. So to he's, reposition he's up over there. There. there you see some of the water on the lens. I think our viewers can see that. So just to give them an idea of what the situation we're dealing with, with a high-speed pursuit of a motorcyclist in really uh, unsafe conditions. So we have some call. water so still pulling on the roadways, some, uh, some slick south, roads, right? and this driver traveling at a very high rate of speed, triple digit uh, speeds, uh, over 120 miles per hour on our area freeways from the 10 to the 610 us. to the 210 freeway and now yeah, dumping off into the Pasadena us. area. I wanna show you some video of, of what was going on earlier. Now this uh, uh, pursuit was happening mainly in the West Covina area. There in the right side of your screen, you see that the driver, the motorcyclist threw some sort of a duffel bag in that area. And Stu and I were just guessing that this motorcyclist did know or is familiar with the Pasadena area perhaps knows someone in that area because he spent a large uh uh, portion of this pursuit, at least in the early part of this pursuit, uh, just circling around the West Covina area, even at one point going into a gas station, seemingly running out of gas or low on gas, and taking a pump from uh, 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 someone who was pumping gas in their vehicle and, pump in, and adding some uh, more fuel into the motorcycle. And now the, the, the uh, motorcyclist continues to go between some buildings it looks like, here, it looks so I like think you wanted, we do have a view look, of this, yeah, Stu. A parking garage. Go ahead, Stu. It looks like it definitely went into a parking garage right there because we didn't see, we saw him there for a second or two, Bobby. Thank you, uh, uh, Pete, for calling it out. That was the black and white. That's going to be Pasadena PD. This is going to be one of those ones again where they're going to have to get a number of officers out here to lock down. That is a large parking garage. And Vinny doing the right thing right now f for sure. We're going to keep an eye, like a wide shot like that, just to see if that, uh, he, you know, he pops out on the other side right there. This is, yeah, this, what is what, this is what I was talking that's about earlier. And, and is we saw this we saw this driver going in and around parking uh, lots and maneuvering very quickly. And how a motorcycle can is is so agile and you're able to move so quickly and 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 officers and vehicles have a tough time trying to follow the motorcyclists. And then when you get into a situation like this, when you pull into a parking garage and you can see this is multiple levels one two 
three, four, at least four levels in this parking garage. And no telling where inside the parking garage the driver, the motorcyclist might have ended up or is, is driving around. They need to get the And then can side. really easily get out of the motorcycle and then get on foot and try to get away from the officers. So right now, you see a couple of black and whites that were following very closely behind as best they could. They look to be surrounding uh, this parking structure, likely on uh, all four sides here. So containing, trying to contain the area and to try and make sure that they see this driver before the driver uh, tries to, to get away. Looks like I'm looking at uh, possibly um, Las Robles Avenue. Does that sound right, Stu? Yep, it definitely. It's going to be off Los, Los Robles, and it's going to be south of Colorado. So it's going to be, it, uh, there you go, Green Street. Green Thank Street. you, Vinny. Uh, we're doing it the old-fashioned way. We're reading the street signs. Hey, the only thing is, is he, he picked up on the bad side for that uh, suspect or the good side for law enforcement. depends on how you look at it. I'm always like, the, I like the positive sides, is that this is a uh, parking garage. And, uh, you know, in, of course, you're going to say, well, that's a great thing. But this one is basically a parking garage that sa stands by itself. There is a bridge right there that takes you across the way. It isn't part of a mall, so there aren't, I'm guessing there aren't multiple entrances into buildings. So if even if he does dump that motorcycle in there and uh, law enforcement find that bike, he, he, where is he going to go? If he's going to leave that building, chances are they're going to see him because it isn't like he can blend into the mall or anything like that. It looks like this is a, basically a freestanding parking garage. So that's going to be a, a plus for law enforcement if they are going to, you know, to try to really get that guy in custody. I'm surprised they're still allowing vehicles to basically just park in there. There's something going on right there at the corner, Vinny. And that was the guy, uh, you know, he was he was looking to Vinny. Vinny's on it all the time. I just got to tell you, Vinny was watching that guy earlier on, and, he, you know, we didn't see where he came from, but it definitely appears that that is the suspect right there uh, being taken into custody, uh, taking off his, uh, his hoodie and just trying to blend in, but uh, definitely got that guy in custody right there. But uh, Vinny Mac has some eyes, man. <laughs> he has some eyes. He's been up there a long time, but his eyesight has not waned. He's, he's got great eyesight. It's interesting that, that this uh, motorcyclist almost looked like he tried to dump off the jacket, the, the helmet, to try, as you said, to just blend in. Blend in. But uh, I don't think that that obviously didn't fool officers. I mean, let's, let's hope they got the right guy here. Yeah, it's true. Maybe he wasn't dressed the part because it is very cold and rainy out there, and perhaps the fact that he wasn't wearing a, uh, any kind of jacket or hoodie might have been one of the reasons why why that uh, he, he got caught. But, you know, Vinny is all about the shoes. He's a shoe guy, that Vinny, and he go. was looking at the shoes. That's what he's telling me right yeah. now. He's a shoe So man. at any rate, yeah. uh, suspect in custody there after a long pursuit. Thank goodness. Nobody I got to I gotta remember that. Always look at the shoes, because what are you going to do, shoes. right? The shoes. Okay. <laughs> this is, uh, the, by the way, the, the Paseo. It's all part of the Paseo Mall, the, the, sh the Paseo Shopping Mall. So this is a, uh, a, a parking structure that is adjacent to the Paseo Shopping Mall, the big shopping mall there on in, in, in Pasadena. And uh, it looks like this driver... Man, pulls off the 210 freeway, gets onto Pasadena streets, and then tries to evade police officers uh, by going into this parking garage. We've seen other chases end like this before, Stu, where they go into these yep. parking garages and they actually get away. Uh, so that, 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 you know, it's a tactic that I have seen before, but that wasn't the case in this situation here. It looks like it's, a, it, it's the end of this pursuit uh, that ends in in Pasadena and fortunately from what we could tell from the time that we have been looking at this for uh, about 45 minutes now as this motorcyclist was traveling at a very high rate of speed it looks like uh, at least what we can tell no one was hurt so that's a real good uh, situation there it looks like this driver now in custody all right Stu Mundell in Sky Fox as well as Vinnie Mac great eyes we appreciate you both thank you very much yep. and uh, we'll continue on here with the new news thank you both uh, on to this story, six-year-old Aiden Laos was shot to death, sitting in a booster seat as his mother drove him to kindergarten. Now a two-week manhunt ends with the arrest of his suspected killers. Christina Gonzalez joining us live in the city of Orange, where we are getting our first look at the suspect ahead of a news conference that takes place in just a few hours from now. Christina. That's right. We're at the vigil side where people have been showing up ever since they heard.